Hi everyone, it's Maya here and it's time again for Reads and Receipts, so we will look through the books that I read in May and see what I can buy for June. My physical TBR count at the start of the month was 75 books. So let's start with the reads, and the first book that I read in May was The Sorceress and the Signet by Patricia A. McKillip. This was a library book, and look at this lovely 90s cover. I actually read it in a bind-up, but this is the cover from 1990 when the book was published. And this was a lyrical fantasy novel with a very mythic feel. It was about humans and gods and old tales. So the main character, Corlo, is part of this group of travelers, and he really loves uh, legends and stories about old gods, and this brings him to the, to the attention of these old gods and captures him in their plot. He also meets the sorceress Nyx, who is an aristocrat who is uh, living in the swamp studying magic. And together they try to follow the gods, uh, let's say, requests in order to save Carlos' traveler troop, and in Nyx's case to get power and knowledge. MacKillip's writing is the bright point of the, this book for me. It's what make it, made it so enjoyable. Her writing is so lovely. I enjoy reading it so much. I've read one book from her before, Ombre and Shadow. I like the writing in that, even though I like uh, this book more. So the plot in this was actually came second for me and the writing came first. The writing style was what kept me reading and loving it. I really like the mythic feel and the old tales that this revolves around and that the ending wasn't predictable. My favorite character was Nyx. No surprise there. She's a dark her sorceress living alone in the swamp wanting to learn everything that she can. I gave this book four stars and I really enjoyed reading it and I will be reading more MacKillip in the future. Next I read an own physical book of mine and this is The Just City by Joe Walton. This is the first in a trilogy and this is a philosophical science fiction book where two Greek gods gather together philosophers across time in order to try out Plato's Republic, Plato's just city. So the gods in question are Athena and Apollo, and the philosophers that they gather across time are the teachers, and they need kids to teach, and they end up buying them from slave markets, but by doing so they end up creating a market for kids of a certain age. So it's this kind of we're only human, good intentions, complications on how to apply Plato's ideas to real life and to real people. And those are like the core dilemmas of this book. We have three POV characters. We have one teacher, one child, and Apollo, who chooses to be born as a human child and take part in this experiment because he wants to figure out humans and why Daphne turned into a tree. So the reading experience for me was a bit difficult. When I wasn't reading this book, I didn't feel like picking it up. And it took me a long time to read this. Uh, over a month, I think. Uh, the subplot that was most interesting to me was the robot subplot, the artificial intelligence subplot, and I found that to be really interesting. It, was, it started, I think, about halfway through the book. I really enjoyed those parts. I have heard that the second book in this series is the best in the series, so I might pick it up at some point. I gave this three stars, and I'd like to give a content warning for rape, and this brings my TBR to 74 books. Then I finally read Dumb Witness by Agatha Christie, which I had had from the library from the start of the year, and I couldn't renew it anymore, so I had to read it. This one is a Poro mystery. In this one, Poro receives a letter from this old woman who fell down the stairs in mysterious circumstances, and she writes a letter to Poro because she's suspicious and thinks there's some foul play involved. But the letter is delayed, and Poro only receives it after the woman is already dead. Cue Poro going through all of the relatives of the woman who were present at the time in order to find out who killed her for the inheritance. I love how in Chris's books everyone is suspicious and everyone has a motive, and this one was very enjoyable, uh, full of dialogue, which made it a fast read, and I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next I finished another owned physical book, I was on a roll, and this is Giants at the End of the World, a showcase of Finnish weird, edited by Johanna Sinisalo and Toni Jerman. And this is a collection of translated Finnish weird that everyone attending Worldcon 75 in Helsinki received. It was very much a mixed bag. It was from many different authors and many different translators, and all of the stories weren't my kind of thing. The first story was by Pasi Ilmari Jäskeläinen, and I haven't read anything from him before. Uh, reading this made me doubt if the translation had captured his writing style properly. I cannot really say, because I haven't read anything, but the thing that caught my attention was this sentence. Girl who looks out the window and who's waiting is like Wednesday or summer or a rocking chair. And in Finnish, this sentence would have alliteration. So the part of sentence that goes like Wednesday or summer or rocking chair would have alliteration in Finnish. That would be kuin keskiviikko tai kesä tai keinutuoli. So you can see how it flows better. So since I haven't read stories from all of these authors, I can't say which translations captured their style well. There was one by Tina Raivara who I have read books from before, and I felt like that story had the same atmosphere that the 
book that I have read from her had. So I think the translation in that captured her writing style well. My favorite out of this collection was Undine by Maria Turchanin of This is a Fairy Tale Inspired Story, so no surprise that I liked it. And it's about exiled mermaids, and it really saved the collection for me because without that story, I would have given this collection two stars, but that story uh, raised it to three stars. And this brings my TBR to 73 books. Next is my purchase from April's Reads and Receipts When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll. So this raised my TBR to 74, but then I read it, so it's back to 73 again. So this is the newest horror comic from one of my favorite comic creators, but it is not my favorite from her. It tells about this catwoman who goes to this castle in order to kill a vampire. And this one had a lot of layers and allegory, and I don't think I got it all. It didn't feel as easily accessible to me story or atmosphere-wise as all of her other work has done. So I think I will have to read this a couple of times more to really get into it. The aesthetics were on point as always, as you can expect from Carol. She uses colors very well. In this one, it's only black, white and red. So there were a lot of beautiful and also delightfully creepy scenes. Having read this once, I would still give this about four stars, but the fourth star comes from the beautiful, beautiful art, and the story so far would be three stars for me, but I think I will have to read this a couple of times more to get into it. But like I said, that hasn't happened to me with Carol's other works. There was also some parts that were text in this, which I found interesting. Then I read The Black God's Drums by B. Jelly Clark. This is a Hugo-nominated novella and I read it from the library. This is a steampunk science fiction fantasy novella that takes place in alternate history New Orleans and it follows Creeper, who is this teen living on the streets, who comes across some important information. Oh, and she has Oya, a god of wind and storms, speaking to her inside her head. I really enjoyed reading this. It was a quick read and a fast-paced adventure. And what I really enjoyed was Clark's world building. The world felt very real and uh, I was very fascinated by it. Um, be it the technology or the racial tensions, uh, it was all very well realized. And on top of that, it was an immersive quick read. I gave it four stars. And then finally, I have finished the Dark is Rising series by Susan Cooper by reading Silver on the Tree or Hopeapu. This is an own physical book. Uh, I read the last book from this two book bind up. This is a middle grade Arthurian series about a group of kids uh, that get tangled in this battle between light and dark. And some of the books follow a different group of kids and some of the uh, books follow this kid called Will, who is part of this old society, let's say, of people fighting for light. I always like the parts with the other kids more than the will parts. I just can't with the will parts. It's basically, he's told to go there, say this, do that, and then everything works out for him. It was the same in The Dark is Rising, the second book in the series. I just felt like he wasn't doing anything himself. I'm also not big into Arthurian themes, so who knows why I picked up this series in the first place. Some of the books in this series managed, at least in some scenes, to create a mythical or spooky atmosphere quite well and have a sense of adventure, but mostly the books fell quite flat for me. I gave this one only two stars, but this did bring my TBR to 72 books. I finished May by reading volumes 3 to 7 of Tokyo Tarareba Girls by Akiko Higashimura, which I had a as a digital comics from Comixology. And this is about three women who want to get married before the Tokyo Olympics. But the main character is that it mostly revolves around is the screenwriter called Rinko and her relationship with this young model, Ki. These volumes are getting better and better, with the focus shifting from the desperation to want to get married into finding your own way. At the end of the volumes, there are these extra comics, which are basically these audience question column comics called Tokyo Tarare Bar. They're set in a bar. I don't really care for them. Some of them I don't like at all, and some of them are pretty funny. So the first couple of volumes I read in May, I gave three stars, and then the latter volumes I gave 3.5 stars. So those were my reads. The only thing that I didn't finish from my May TBR was The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie, which I finished on the first day of June. So let's move on to the receipts. First is my A to Z TBR challenge. I got two more letters. I got J from the Just City and G from Giants at the End of the World. Then for my TBR char challenge, last month I pulled read a book that was featured in a trial chapter video. I didn't do that one, but I finally finished my old TBR char pull, which was to read a hardcover by reading Just City. So can I buy a physical book in June? And yes, I can. I need to read two books off my physical TBR shelf, and I read three. So I ended up ordering a collection of short work from Theodora Goss called In the Forest of Forgetting from Better World Books, which is this online used bookstore. And I also did end up buying two other physical books in May, 
which don't count for my project and for my TBR because I've already read them. The first uh, thing that I ordered was The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison, which I have as a paperback. And that was the reason why I did that Better World Books order, because they had the hardcover in used, very good condition. And I have been craving for that old hardcover for so long. And the new copies that I have found from eBay or such have been like 80 euros, so... I haven't ordered those, but I thought I'd try my luck with this one. It was not used like new, it was used very good, but it said that it should have a dust jacket and not really that much wrong with it. So I will have to wait until it comes, I think, at the end of uh, June, beginning of July, when it arrives to Finland. It takes quite a while and see in what condition it is. I also took a lot of books to this used bookstore, and with the credit that I got from that, I ended up picking up the Finnish translation of Vangt en Apre, or 20 Years Later by Alexandre Dumas, Musketisoturit seikkailevat jälleen. And this is the sequel to The Three Musketeers, and I have read this one before, so even though I do want to read it again, it won't add to my TBR count. This is like a thousand pages long. <laughs> So I basically traded about 10 books for one book, and this is something that I wanted to own uh, for a long while. Uh, but it was hard to find because there hasn't been a new edition in a long time in Finland. This one is from the 80s, and I think this is the newest one. And the other thing that I got from the used bookstore was this horror movie that I haven't been able to found, find anywhere on streaming. And that is The Descent uh, by Neil Marshall. And I have heard good things about this, so these were the two things that I exchanged my books for. And can I buy an ebook? I actually didn't read a single ebook in May, which is very unusual for me, so I don't get to buy one. But remember that I had two credits left from previous uh, past months when I hadn't spent my ebook buying quota that month, so I did end up getting two ebooks. Right after I finished filming my April reads and receipts, uh, Snow White Learns Witchcraft by Theodora Goss, which is one of my most anticipated uh, releases of the year, was on sale, so of course I picked that up. This is another of her short story collections. Uh, this one has a fairy tale inspired stories and poems, so it sounds right up my alley. I have now bought three books from Theodore Agost this year, and I haven't read a single one of those yet. And then The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin was also on sale. I had been craving a reread of this for a while, and I did start reading it the moment I bought it. I just love the characters in this, the gods and the main character. And perhaps this time when I read this, I will actually finish the series. I have only read this first book. Then there's this one sort of a freebie. I sent in a net galley request for the very best of Caitlin R. Kiernan, which was also one of my most anticipated books of the year. And this one is a retrospective collection of uh, her dark fantasy and horror short stories, and I've enjoyed uh, her writing in the past. So this one is already out, but for some reason it was on net galley, so I requested it. So I spent my two buy an ebook credits, and then I cheekily went and asked for a review copy. But that was not all, because in May I also got the 2019 Hugo Voters packet, which included a ton of ebooks, uh, stuff like A Trail of Lighting by Rebecca Roanhorse, uh, Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti, On the Red Station Drifting by Alia de Bodar. So at the end of May I felt like I didn't need to buy any more ebooks in June, but boy was I wrong. More of, more of that in my June reads and receipts. I have broken some rules. So I did end up buying two digital comics. I bought the final two volumes, volumes 8 and 9 in Tokyo Tararaba Girl, so that I could finish this series in June. And I had read all of my Comixology comics that I had, so I gave myself permission to buy these two on sale. Next is Can I Borrow? And no, because I didn't read two physical books and one ebook. I was gonna say that I don't really mind that I can't borrow, but once more, <laughs> wait till my June reads and receipts. So at the end of the month, I had two library books left for June. I had Atlas Alone by Emma Newman and On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. So finally, let's quickly go through the stats. I read 12 books in May. That was 2,391 pages. That averages out to 77 pages a day. On average, I spent three days reading a book. And my current physical TBR number is 72. So close to the 60s, I can almost feel it. So that was my May reads and receipts. This comes out a bit later in the month than I would have liked. But anyway, that's all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.